Thanks everybody for joining today's demo of a web store solution. Uh, our web store solutions do support multiple different carts. Um, some of our preferred carts are Magento, Press the Shop, Shopify, WooCommerce, and Amazon. Today we're going to be taking a look at primarily our web store solution built on a Magento platform. So we have our Magento demo site up here. So for today, we want to focus on our core workflows, which is going to be items going out from Sage to the web. And then we'll focus on the link of a web customer to a Sage customer. And then we will place an order, which would be an inbound record into Sage. To do that, I'm going to take a look at a product detail page here for this Brie cheese. And I'll pull up the same item in my Sage system. This is Sage 2018 Cloud. Uh, we do support Sage 100 Standard Advanced Premium and the cloud versions from 2013 and forward. Um, our outbound integrations use Sage's business object, which essentially means we have full access to every field in the table that correlates to that business object. So we're looking at product details online, which would be items in Sage. If I pull up the item maintenance screen, everything that's on here can be synced out to web store. Um, you will see things like your item code we're displaying here. We are displaying the standard price. You'll see it's actually a lower price here because in a minute we're going to take a look at Sage pricing. Um, the quantities from the warehouses will come out. In this case, we're just showing that it is available, but you can sync out quantities at the warehouse level and you have a choice of whether to sync one warehouse, all warehouses, or a subset of warehouses. And we also sync out user-defined fields. So we have a web store tab we usually create. We'll create a checkbox to mark this item as included in web store. Um, we also will mark whether it should be enabled or visible on the website itself. And we sync out some other fields, like the web title here we're syncing out as the product name. Uh, we are syncing out a web short description, which you see at the bottom here. And that could be different than your internal description for items. So we typically use a user-defined field for that. If you are selling items that have attributes like T-shirts that come in different sizes and colors, we can turn on our attribute enhancement, which adds these fields here for uh, web parent and web attributes. So in that example, the parent would be a T-shirt. It would have its own product detail page then you would have drop downs for sizes and colors. So we would set up attributes for size and color and then the corresponding value, whether it's large, medium, uh, red, blue, stuff like that. Um, I had mentioned the standard price here is actually higher than what's showing online. That's because we are syncing out stage pricing. I'm logged in already as a B2B customer. So I do get special pricing. Um, and that is under price code maintenance here. We set up a web price code. We set up a price level of W for web customers, and then we set up some tiered pricing. So I am getting a 5% discount right off the bat, which is why it's showing us $14.25 instead of $15. If I were to change this here, we'll demo the outbound integration real quick. I'll just do a drastic discount of 50%, and I'll save that. Then I'll come over here and refresh the product detail page. You'll see the price drops to 750. So that's instantaneous. As soon as the price is changed in Sage, that record is pushed out to Web Store and further to Magento. I'll change that back here, and then we'll go ahead and continue with the process that a normal re retail or B2C customer um, would follow. So I would continue browsing product detail pages and adding items to the cart as I want them. I've done that here. I pre-populated a shopping cart with some items and you can see that tiered pricing coming into play again here. So I have my 5% discount for a quantity of 12 and I get an even bigger discount for a quantity of 24 and 36. So you can see the prices are adjusted as needed here um, as I'm adding items to the cart. Regardless of whether I'm B2C or B2B, I'll proceed to checkout and we'll go through the one page checkout process. Um, 
regardless, you're going to pick a ship to and build to address, which is going to sink into Sage. So I'll continue here, pick that address. If I was logged in as B2C, the next step would be for that address that's being used at the ship to address to be used to calculate sales tax. Similar to how we synced out pricing, we can also sync out Sage sales tax. So we would sync out your tax codes, your tax schedules, and all of that. Or you can do something um, with sales tax automation with third-party applications like Avalara that I calculated at the street address level, we can integrate with those as well. The next step from there would be to get live shipping rates. So for this demo system, we're integrated with UPS. I'll pick UPS ground. Um, we can integrate with the major carriers, UPS, FedEx, and USPS by default. We can also enhance it further to integrate with other carriers if needed and modify the rate calculations that are used to add shipping and handling or any kind of upcharge or anything like that. Um, after that's selected, your next step is payment information. So you'll see default account terms as an option here because I am a B2B customer, but I'm going to continue as a B2C customer for now and we'll revisit this in a few minutes. So I'll pay by credit card. I'm just going to put in my saved credit card information. You have two options here. You can, If you use the Sage endorsed credit card processor, we can actually integrate that with Sage as well. So we'll tokenize the card or we'll get the token from any kind of vault if you're using Sage Payment Solutions or American Payment Solutions. We'll get the token. We'll pass that in with the authorization code. It'll come in as a payment record with the order. So that payment tab and sales order entry will be lit up with data on it. Or you could do what we're doing here and use any kind of web-based credit card processor, but not integrate it with Sage. So you can use Square, you can use Apple Pay, PayPal, Authorize.net, any of those credit card processors for the web. And then it won't come in as a payment record, but we can send in a deposit amount. So you'll see the order still comes in with a zero balance because it was paid in full at checkout. That's what I'll do here. I'll place the order. I'll wait for my confirmation page. Similar to how the changes think from Sage out, it, it works the same way inbound into Sage. This triggers that three-step hop as well. So I have a confirmation page. That means the order was successfully processed and written to Magento's database, then passed to WebStore based on a trigger that says once this order is written to Magento, send it to WebStore. WebStore translates it to Sage's format and sends it into Sage. So it makes that same three-step hop. Um, if I pull up my sales order entry screen here and then go to the most recent sales order, you'll see that we do have an order that came in. That came in under the customer my web account is linked to. And the comment holds the reference number from the website. So you have that tra the ability to trace back to the web and you have that audit trail. Our inbound integrations do work the same as our outbound using business objects, which essentially means you're mimicking that manual data entry again. So everything that's on the sales order entry screen is available to us to map. And if we don't map it, Sage's normal logic will take over. So when you put in a customer number, I did not link the salesperson. I did not link the terms codes, but those come that comes over by default because I'm, I put in the customer number, same way as if you manually entered it. On top of that, we do link the fields that we map. So our ship via was UPS ground, that's visible here. Our comment holds the web order ID. Our address tab holds the billing and shipping addresses. Our lines tab holds all of the items and the quantities that were in the cart. Um, and doing it this way when Sage, since we're mimicking Sage's pricing rule, when Sage recalculates the price in the order entry screen here, it will match to the penny. So we have our subtotal. On the total tab, we have the freight amount that we selected at checkout and our order total matches. We also have a deposit amount because we paid by credit card, so the net order is zero. Um, and nothing is on the payment tab because we're not using a Sage um, integrated payment processor on the demo site here. But if we were to use Sage Payment Solutions or American Payment Solutions, then this would be populated as well. So that kind of shows the core workflow of outbound integration for items and inbound integration for sales orders, and it's tied to the customer my web account is linked to. 
So what we would, um, which is a good segue into the, the B2B side of it. When it comes to B2B, we still have that same base that we just looked at for B2C, but then we add some additional options on top of it. Um, one of them being customer registration. So if you have a B2B customer goes to your site for the first time, they'll create their own login, and then they can validate against Sage. So they would put in their customer number, they put in some other verifying information like a zip code, or the last invoice number, and that lets them validate against Sage, which automatically approves them and lets them start placing orders and giving them access to that additional functionality that we're about to cover here. Um, another option we add is quick order because B2B customers are going to be ordering in bulk. They're going to be ordering more frequently. A lot of it's repeat orders. They don't want to go product by product adding it to the cart. So we add quick order here, which shows your entire product catalog in a grid format and allows them to quickly add multiple items to the cart at once. This can be filtered down to the category level similar to a B2C user would browse the site looking for a specific category and finding the items they want. So it just shortens up the grid right now with 33 products showing, but I can filter it down to something like crackers and submit that and get the smaller um, chunk of data. I can also use the search capability. So if I search for olives, it's going to break the grid or filter the grid down into three specific items. If I were to search for wine, it'll give all the items that I just had in my cart. And rather than going bottle by bottle, I can just add all my quantities right from here and hit add to cart and it puts them all in there at once. So that makes the process a whole lot easier for your wholesale customers to place orders quickly. In addition to that, we do sync out invoice history for our B2B customers to allow them to pay later because a B2C customer is usually going to pay up front. B2B might have terms, and that was what that other option for payment was, the default account terms. If I have net 30 terms, I can place an order without paying. Once it's actually shipped, that will get converted to an invoice, and then that invoice will have those net 30 terms that will also show here. And I can see that I have some open invoices here. I do have some invoices that have been paid in full, so I see my zero balance. But any invoice that's open has a checkbox, so I can start paying, selecting these invoices for payment. If I had terms that had discounts, if I was within that discount window, that would come into play here. If I had any credit memos, I'd be able to select them as well. So I'll have a total of the invoices I'm paying minus any discounts will give me a total payment amount. And then if I continue from here, uh, this would take me through and allow me to make a payment using the same processor. So if I had Sage Payment Solutions, I'd be able to go and uh, process the payment for this payment amount here, which will then capture that, send it into Sage. But in this case, instead of a deposit, or a sales order payment record, it's going to go in as a cash receipt. So it's going to be tied to this customer as the invoices I'm paying, and it will automatically enter a cash receipt, no different than if they were to mail you a check and you were to manually enter that in cash receipt entry. Once you process those cash receipts and post them, it'll send out the um, updated invoice amounts, and then you'll show the zero balance invoices um, like we do here. Then, regardless, of whether you're B2C or B2B at this point, um, at that point when the invoice goes back out, any tracking will also go with it. So if you entered a tracking number and shipping data entry or invoice data entry, or if you use a third-party shipping application that's integrated with Sage, whether it be UPS's WorldShip or Starship, whatever the case may be, as long as it writes a tracking number back to Sage, we can sync that further back out through Web Store to the Magento cart. So I'm pulled up an old order here. Um, and you can see I do have the option to print it or reorder from here, similar to the order I placed earlier. But I also have shipments showing. So this shows that this order was shipped and it is on the way. I can click track my order here. It'll bring up a tracking number. It'll bring up the carrier that was selected. And it'll also give a link to that carrier site to track that specific tracking number and see exactly where in transit it is. So we've taken a look at, at this point, at our um, core workflow, which is the items going out from Sage, 
and the link between web customers and Sage customers, and then your orders coming into Sage. That being said, with Web Store, um, you do you kind of can expand it to whatever you want. The sky's pretty much the limit. We can integrate with any business object in Sage and essentially take any Sage functionality out to the web. Our only limitation is the legacy module, which right now is just work order. So you can integrate with any other Sage module and um, build a platform or build a portal or um, for any kind of your customers. So we looked at your main e-commerce option here, which is going to be browsing the catalog and adding items to the cart and checking out. But you could also do things like customer portals. We have some customers who set up portals to go in and see their invoices and pay their invoices online for something like a, a cable company or a parking company or any kind of subscription-based service or service-based industry where you go on to a portal and you pay your invoices and they come in as cash receipts. So you're essentially just creating a portal for that invoice history that we looked at just now. Um, so it could be a full e-commerce experience or just part of it, and uh, you can expand to meet your specific needs. Thank you for taking the time to view this demo today. And have a great day.